Welcome again friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we will be talking about the B cell activation and the crosstalk between T helper cell and B cell. Remember one thing that always what we talk about this immunological lectures. I told you like in past few videos we've been talking about T cell and we know the activation of T helper cell is one of the major events that will help in uplifting both the cellular mediated immunity as well as the humoral mode of immunity. Now B cell is responsible for the humoral side of immunity because B cell have the capability of converting itself into what is known as plasma cell. So this is the B cell that we are talking about. When it gets matured it will produce plasma cells and plasma cells, plasma cells are antibody producing factories of our body that start producing antibodies. Those antibodies are very specific against a specific pathogen. It can go against the pathogen, interact with the pathogen and then it can cause several destruction measures to the pathogen. It can help that pathogen to be degraded by the phagocytosis by other phagocytic cells of our body such as macrophages by the process called opsonization. Antibodies also help in fixing complement that is another part of our serum, blood serum. That complement can be fixed and as a result the pathogen either could be bacteria in most of the cases can be killed by producing membrane attack complex or creating pores in the membrane of the bacteria. So all this thing can be done by this antibody response and all this response should be activated because you know everything is present in our body in our immune system. All those cells are armed with so many different things, but they are not active all the time. They are inactive. That's how they present. That's how they, they just loitering around throughout our body. Now the thing is, in this case, we need to activate that cells. For example, B cells normally present in inactive form. It has B cell receptors on the surface. This is known as B cell receptor or BCR these are the B cell receptor just like the T cell receptor here. T cell also have its unique receptor, B cell also have its unique receptor. But B cell have a unique capability that B cell can produce antibodies. So there are antibodies found attached, antibodies are found attached to this B cell receptors, tightly attached to the B cell receptors of the B cell. So this antibody that are present on surface of the B cells, they can bind specifically to antigen or pathogenic fragments. And we know that B cell is also another type of antigen presenting cell. And what we mean by antigen presenting cell is that B cell can also engulf a pathogen or fragment of pathogen. It can break it down inside the cell, process that antigen and can load that antigen on surface of these antibodies and it can showcase that to the rest of the other cells. So the idea here, these antibodies that we see surrounding this B cell can engage in interaction with any sort of pathogen. So let me draw the pathogen with this green color. Let us say here, this is the pathogenic fragment uh, that this B cell is interacting with the help of a specific antibody. Now it uptake that inside, it break that pathogen down in fragments and load one of such fragments in a complex known as MHC class 2 or major histocompatibility class 2 complex. This one is MHC 2. This is the showcasing molecule like this is a receptor. They load the fragment of pathogen on surface of the receptor and showcase that to the rest of the immune system that here I, what I got I get a fragment of a pathogen. So now you need to activate me so that I can keep producing some antibody against that pathogen to fight against it, right? That is the thing, that is the idea that this B cell want to do. And then this MHC class 2 on loaded with this pathogen, it is showcasing that pathogen to the T helper cell. In this case, this is T helper 2 cell. There are two types of T helper, T helper 1 and T helper 2. This is T helper 2 cell and T helper 2 cell is engaging in interaction with the B cell 
and this interaction between B cell and T helper cell is very in important for B cell to get activated. One thing I should tell, one very very important concept is that all the time in our body there is a variety of T cells, variety of B cells are present who can find out specific antigens and bind with that antigen. Okay? Because antigens are foreign particles, that, that those things are coming from outside of our body. So our body should not be able to recognize them always. But these cells, this antibody, there are, there are two regions of antibody, a variable regions and a constant region. The variable region is the region through which they interact with an anti antigen. So that is the variable region. With the help of this variable region, they have different kind of modifications in the variable region, in different antibody. Like all of them are different with different variable regions because there are so many mutations going on in all those variable regions called somatic hypermutation. Due to those mutations, they have different type of structures. So they can bind with many varieties of antigens, right? So they have the ability to bind with different types of antigens in our body. So every time when an antigen enters, there is at least one or two cells or some percentage of our immune system cells capable of binding to that antigen and identify that antigen. Then that proportion of that cell start dividing, they start producing same type of cells so that immunity gets boosted. That is the idea of adaptive uh, immunity, that is how we, we, we boost our immunity normally inside our body. It based on the idea that there is at least one or two types of cells present who can identify the antigen. Now if, if this thing happens like an antigen enters into our body and none, none of the cells, no cells can identify that antigen will be in huge trouble. If that is the scenario then we will never survive even a, a simple infection. But that is not the case. It is far more complex because they have multiple varieties, so many varieties that at least one or two of them can identify the antigen, can bind with that antigen. So those cells who can bind with that antigen are selected, it is kind of like an evolution, the concept of Darwinian evolution. They are selected, so those type of strains are generated so much inside the cell, inside the body. Rest of the cells are not required at all. So all the time there is a huge proportion of immune system cells present in our body not actively participating in the immunity at all. While a few percentage and few fraction of the cells are involving in the immunity. Now why that large content present then? Because they are present to keep in mind that in future they might be useful in detecting any other antigen. That is the whole idea in this case. Now let us look at here. The interaction between T cell and B cell mediated by three different molecules on the surface. The major interaction is between the T cell receptor and the major histocompatibility complex 2 which is loaded with the pathogen or the fragment of pathogen. It's normally is a peptide. So this is the major interaction. But they also need some co-stimulatory interactions that is mediated by CD40 and CD40 ligand. CD40 is present in surface of all the antigen presenting cells. B cell is type of antigen presenting cell, so it also have a CD40. This is the CD40. It, it engages interaction with CD40 ligand that is found on surface of T helper cell. These two binding once this binding is occurred, then CD4 that is the characteristic that is the characteristic molecule on surface of T helper cells. CD4 properly check this interaction. Once the interaction is between TCR and MHC2 is kind of perfect. Once this T cell can recognize this antigenic portion. The same scenario is again in this case of T cells. There are multiple varieties of T cells. Specific T cells can only recognize the pathogen that is showcased by an antigen presenting cell. So from a huge population of T cell, that T cell will be selected who have the capability of identifying the antigen that is showcased by or that is presented by the MHC2. So they are inter interacting. Once this binding is proper, then CD4 
make this binding much stronger. When the CD4 is engaging in interaction with both TCR and MHC2, it makes the interaction much stronger. Once the interaction is strong enough, then they engage in proper interactions and then they start releasing chemokines that is the chemical signaling molecules that will help this to understand B cell to get differentiated. It will like a phone call that yes, we handshake now, it is fine, I understand what you are telling me. Now let us talk about what we want to say. So then there will be a molecular crosstalk between T cell and B cell and the crosstalk is this begin from this T cell, I should have write T cell, T cell start releasing interleukin 4. Interleukin 4 is a very important cytokine here which will interact to this B cell because remember once B cell engage properly with the T helper cell there is a some sort of modification and genetic rearrangement and also the production of certain uh, receptors start to occur on surface of B cell and that receptor is known as interleukin receptor. So, they have this interleukin receptor on their surface produced in high concentration after engaging in a proper attachment with T helper cell and meanwhile T helper cell start releasing interleukin 4. So, this interleukin 4 will go and interact with this interleukin receptor on surface of B cells. Now, once interleukin 4 properly bind and bound with this interleukin receptor of B cell that triggers some more downstream signaling inside the B cell telling the B cell to undergo so many different changes. One of such changes is hypermutations to produce so many different varieties of antibodies and also another very important thing is that uh, those changes include like producing a lot of protein factors all those translation process go on like the translation the cellular translation events just uh, like uh, hugely boosted up there so many translation events start to occur because they start producing antibodies and also they change in their morphology a little bit the cytosolic content gets bigger the nucleus to cytosol ratio that gets altered because the cytosol is get bigger so the cell kind of change its morphology to a kind of kind of large cell with small nucleus and a huge cytosolic content and they need that cytosolic content because they need a more area for the translation or protein synthesis and protein synthesis take place in cytosol so they start producing all those molecules known as antibody which type of antibody they will produce they produce that antibody who earlier recognizes the pathogen fragment. Let us say this antibody was IgG. So, in this case they will produce IgG, lot of IgG. If this was IgM, then they should produce IgM instead of IgG. Now, it depends on which type of antibody recognizes a specific type of pathogen. It is not only type of IgG or IgM only because among IgG there will be different variable regions also different varieties of IgG, different types of IgM. So, it depends on which specific variable region required to capture that pathogen. That specific uh, region should be produced as a replica and so many same type of antibody will be produced which will be very very specific against that pathogen. So, now one plasma cell starts secreting the antibody, the antibody start releasing outside and those antibody can go and interact with the antigen, bind with the antigen and then bring rest of the process like opsonization or complement fixation. In either way, it will kill the target pathogen. That is the whole idea of B cell activation. I hope you understand the process of B cell activation. If you understand the video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to learn more about immunology. Thank you.